Why am I the Holy Ghost? Listen, Caspa. <laughs> Hello. Hi. I'm Brittany. I'm Brad. And we are coming to you live from social distancing. Mm-hmm. And we're audio shelf. Yes, we are. Because <laughs> this is us. Oh my gosh. Okay, so we made a whole video that we were going to post on Monday about um, not being able to be together because Maryland is currently in, under a stay-at-home order. But we have been hearing a lot of people getting together via Zoom, and mm -hmm. so we thought, why can't we record the show from Zoom? So, yes. zoom, zoom, zoom. Because, you know, during this quarantine, it's best to stay home. Brad's coming at you with all the props today. All the signs, all the wall signs. <laughs> So today we are going to be talking about um, a book that was actually goes with the times. It was about a pandemic and it was actually supposed to be released in 2005, but the uh, publisher said that it was too unrealistic and unreasonable. And so it was shelved and the author who I believe is Peter May He's a mm -hmm. Scottish author. He, Scottish. He um, is now releasing it. And so it came out on Thursday, mm -hmm. last Thursday. And it's only available in Amazon UK. Which is mm. on internet. But hopefully it might be available worldwide, much like this virus. Yes. So what is this book about? So the Tell book us. is about a pandemic that starts in London and it carries through um, globally. And it was actually based on the pandemic procedures that the UK and US government were currently working on because they thought in 2002 that the bird flu was going to be a worldwide pandemic. Um, and it was, but it wasn't as serious as the times that we are currently in right now. Um, oh, girl. So the book was basically about being locked down and being stuck in your home and what happens <laughs> when you're at home. That sounds an awful lot like what's happening now. Mm -hmm. And it actually sounds like a lot of the books, maybe not a lot, but it sounds like a few of the books that were also released in 2005 or 2003, 2006, whenever this book was supposed to be released. Mm. What happened to this book? Like, you know, I think, you know, I think it's a whole publishing industry situation. Mm -hmm. I think they only want to, they, they like hoard these books that are hot topic button, mm -hmm. hot button topic kind of discussions. And they try, sorry, I've been drinking. <laughs> <laughs> drinking watermelon. Oh my gosh. So they've been hoarding these stories and they're like, we're not going to put them out. We are not going to put them out until something bad is going to happen. Okay, but the interesting thing is, is that this, the, his original publisher did not put it out, put the, put the kibosh on it, like right away saying it's too unreasonable and unrealistic. And then mm -hmm. his new publisher, he actually got a message on Twitter saying, hey, what if you wrote a book about the current times that we're in? And he was like, mm, you know what? I kind of already did. And he took oh. it to his editor. Mm -hmm. The editor read it, said, this needs to be published now. The publisher said, okay, let's do this. New publisher, new business that he's in. So it makes me question whether it was a source of the times, like publishing during the early O's. Mm. And now that we're in like these indie publishing, these like self-publishing, these smaller publishing branches, times, if that doesn't play a role in why this book is now able to be released and we're gonna get a lot of oh, yeah. pandemic books this like i remember like probably early 2000s we had the like dystopian like genre that took over yes pandemic is gonna take over yes it's gonna take over mm -hmm. and the funny thing is that a lot of the books that were released in 2003 to 2006 because i was doing some research on this mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. Um, and seeing a lot of the books that were released were a lot of urban fantasy. There was some biomedical thrillers, um, a lot of thrillers that showed that the thriller genre was really, really wide then. 
and that Ooh. this book should not have been it shouldn't have been canned it should have been released to the public in 2005 but i wonder if it would have done as well you see i don't i am not a huge biomedical thriller fan mm -hmm. so i don't think i would have picked it up i mean you don't like science you know it reminds me of zoo by yes. james patterson yeah and it reminds me of when all those animals broke out of that zoo and they were taking over the whole like they were becoming smart and they were like taking over human nature essentially mm -hmm. and so i'm like is that believable why isn't this story that's very eerily familiar right now believable right was it a thing of like it was too close to home like the publishers believed it could happen and so they were like no we can't have this happening like mm. we cannot have this out because it's gonna scare people it's gonna freak people out it's gonna make a it's gonna make an epidemic of itself by like causing fear in the hearts of people i don't know what that's called what is that mm. called when like people believe something so much that then it like becomes true um it starts with an h um hysteria Oh, yes, it would cause hysteria, mass hysteria, <laughs> like in oh, 1950s housewife. There's like many different reasons as to like why this would have been killed, essentially. Mm -hmm. But none to say that it because it was unreasonable and unrealistic. That just seems yeah. like a bold excuse that the publisher gave that they could use to be like, OK, well, this is the reason why we are rejecting your book. Yes. So what are some other books that you found? So another book that I found, which was like, not similar, but like, it was kind of like, it was kind of creepy. It mm -hmm. was science fiction. It's listed as science fiction and thriller. Mm -hmm. And it's called The Xeno Solution by Nelson Ehrlich. And Ooh. it's the use of animal organs. Oh, someday soon. The I'm sorry, what? <laughs> someday soon. The use of animal organs in human patients has revolutionized medicine in the 21st century. Free. <laughs> thousands of patients from dialysis and sparing them the slow death of waiting for a human organ that may never come. Thanks to the discoveries of paradigm transplant solutions, reliable organs are available to almost anyone who needs them. Some fear that animal transplants could cause a deadly virus to cross over into the human population, triggering an epidemic of catastrophic proportions. However, PTS uses only cloned animals that have been genetically engineered to be virus-free. So this danger should be eliminated. Or has it? Girl, after this pandemic, we are not only going to need therapy, but we're going to need group therapy. <laughs> we got our group therapy. Okay, we got our group therapy right here. Yes. Oh, my gosh. I can't. But that's one that science fiction and i noticed that a lot of the ones that deal with these like kind of virus mm -hmm. issues are listed as science fiction thriller they're not listed as like bio thriller or realistic fiction realistic fiction even mm -hmm. or like true crime which i wonder if now with a lot of people releasing pandemic books if they could be released as like true if there's going to be a new genre birthed from pandemic books domestic terrorism yes like overseas terrorism <laughs> overseas <laughs> virus terrorism yes i can see I that happening terrorized. i feel terrorized yes oh my gosh you know every time i go in the can i just say every time i go into a damn store if i'm not wearing why are you a mask going into stores why well, are you for going grocery to groceries okay, okay essential so if i'm not like if i'm not going to the grocery store and if i'm not wearing a mask everyone's like like, girl, I had disease. I felt that so much yesterday. We had to go to the grocery store for essential food items. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had masks, but I was like, no, like nobody, nobody's going to be. It's this weird like brain thing, brain hurdle, I guess, to get over to mm -hmm. be like, no, people are wearing masks. We didn't wear a mask in the grocery store. And I was like, I'm an idiot. I should have wear a mask. Like everyone except for like five people. And we were two of those five mm -hmm. people were not wearing masks, but everyone else was. And I was like, you had DIY masks. Yes. Oh, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like scary, serious. Well, at first it comes in stages because at first the masks were only worn by people who were sick. Yeah. Now it's like, if you ain't wearing a mask, we're going to side out of you. 
Yes. Yeah, that's very true. And it's because they now have released that you should be wearing a mask whether you're sick or not. And it's scary. So so what are you, how are what types of information are authors going to use from this experience? That is the crazy thing. So like for this book Lockdown by Peter May, he used pandemic preparedness documents from 2002. So like because of the bird flu back then, which I vaguely remember People I don't remember no damn that. birth flu. I remember the Spanish flu. Oh, that was bad. The Span- How do you remember Girl, the Spanish flu? That, that was 1918. Was so I was so sick. <laughs> That's how good I look. <laughs> You're a mess. That's what you. Oh were. my gosh! It's Where gonna start another. Mark? It's it's lit- My beauty mark was a. It was falling off of my drink, so I just like. <laughs> no, you don't remember like the bird and swine flu. I do remember the swine flu. I feel like that was like 2006 when we were older, but I vaguely remember the bird flu because I was like, can I not play with birds? That came with pigs, right? Yes. As you <laughs> stuff your face <laughs> with mm. salad. Mm-hmm. Okay. But the, the Peter May used the pandemic preparedness documents for his information to make it as realistic as possible. That's the mm-hmm. other thing. He tried to make it as realistic as possible so that it could not be called unrealistic and that it could potentially maybe someday be used as a guide of mm. how to get us through. But what are people going to use that are making pandemic books now? Because we know that the movies are coming. That's all Netflix recommends to me now is pandemic movies from 2001. Contagion. Yes. Frozen. Like, Frozen 2. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, the virus won't die in the ice, okay? I know I know they're definitely going to be using the masks yes. and the hand sanitizer. Well, this is the Wash thing. your hands. This is the thing, is that it's one of those where you don't know how is the world going to return to normal. Are yeah. masks now in America going to be looked at as... Coats. As coats? As... <laughs> Because you know that we would look at the Asian culture and see them using masks and we would be like, why are you using masks? Yeah. I think that's why, that's part of the hang up in my head is that I'm just like, people have been saying no to masks for so long and now Mm -hmm. it's it's just becoming the every day. Yeah. I want to get one of those masks that have the ventilators in there. You don't need it. If you don't need it, people, you don't buy it. Okay? Girl. Okay. Heard it here first. <laughs> Heard it here first on audio show and also Heard. your news stations. Mm. I've like, been taking my blood pressure every five seconds. Like, it is crazy. Why are you, you taking your blood pressure? Because I just want to make sure everything is right. It's tight and right. You know, most people would be like, why do you have a blood pressure machine? But that mm-hmm. doesn't shock me. What shocks me is that you're taking your blood pressure right now. Yes. Um, we go handle it. We go handle it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. as you can conti- continue, um, I am just very curious as to what's going to come out of this because honestly, looking at the books that came out in 2003 to 2006, seeing this book lockdown by Peter May as unrealistic and unreasonable is mm-hmm. laughable. You had urban fantasy thrillers from Dean, Koontz and um, what's his name? Uh, yeah, Dean Koontz. Are we going to talk about Dean Koontz? Yeah, because you had Odd Thomas come out then. You had about five books from Dean Koontz come out. And it makes me wonder if it was a merit slash name situation mm-hmm. that got the got locked down, kiboshed from the, from the beginning in 2005. Y'all, this is not a good sign. <laughs> That's not a good sign. What is that supposed to be? I don't know. I don't know how to read blood pressure. They always say, oh, you're like 60 over. That's not good. 32. That's not good, y'all. I don't think you're supposed to be three digits. Maybe you are. I don't think so. But yeah, lots of books. There's lots of books and there are so many that just, they're urban fantasy. And yes, that is not the genre that a pandemic book would fall under. But the point is, is that the thriller genre is so vast. It's Mm -hmm. huge that having a book that falls under the thriller genre 
that's a pandemic book would just be science fiction. It would be a different a different version. And so it doesn't matter what sub genre it falls under. The thing is, is that it would still be thriller. Mm -hmm. And it should have been allowed to be released. Yes, I agree. And now they're going to release it now. Mm -hmm. And it's going to make so much money. Oh, 100%. But it's only available in the Amazon UK, which kind of draws us back to our Goodreads video last week where we had a great comment. Um, about the fact that some books are available in the UK that aren't available in anywhere else. Mm-hmm. And that made me think, like, maybe this uh, maybe this whole thing is greater than we know. Conspiracy. Mm-hmm. Conspiracy. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just, like, such an interesting thing. Like, I couldn't mm. believe that when it popped up in my Google News, because that's how I saw it. Mm. It was on CNN.com about this author who had his book about a pandemic shut down crazy crazy absolutely crazy i just wonder i wonder if this is going to be a i'm telling you why a adult historical fiction all these genres are gonna blow up you know i thought we were past the dystopians mm-hmm. honestly i thought we were getting out of dystopian mm-hmm. land mm-hmm. but we're just gonna go right back into it because it looks like a dystopian well, outside. now it's kind of like the between stages because with dystopian the world already ended. So now we're dealing with how the world is. Mm-hmm. With pandemic books, it's gonna we're gonna be in the action. We're gonna be like, holy crap, that is how this world ends. Oh my god. I know, we're currently in it. So I feel like I'm watching a movie and yeah. it's gonna happen. Oh, it's gonna be so it's gonna mirror all the books are gonna mirror this. Oh, a thousand percent. All the movies. The movies for 2021 are all going to be contagion movies. Yes. You heard it here first again. Yes, you heard it here first. The entertainment industry is going to make bank off of your fear. Mm, okay? Ooh. Oh, can we get that quoted? You you write this down? Okay, you better. Mm-hmm. It's going to be quoted. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically, the long and short of this video is that this book, Locked Down by Peter May, is was surpassed in 2005 when there's a whole ton of other books from thriller genres that were released. Is it because of mm-hmm. meme recognition? Is it because of the topic that it was? Were the publishers afraid that this was too real? So they said that it was too unreal yes. in order to just give an excuse. What was the reason... But the bottom line is that now it's being released and it's going to be basically the manual for pandemic book. Mm -hmm. All the books are going to be reading this one to find out how to make this story go. Yeah. Yeah. Because he did a lot of research on it. And so I'm interested in reading it. If we can get our hands on it, I don't know how Mm. we would, but if we can, if we can find it, it's coming out in audio book, I think this month, April. Oh, I got my headphones on already. I'm ready to listen. Yes, you do. I'm ready to listen. You are prepared. You know what? To be honest, in quarantine, I have not read or listened to a single thing. I'm curious about that because I've read four books already. That's weird. I mean, I guess it's not weird, but to me, it's weird. You've been watching a lot of TV, which is also another activity to do during this time. Yes. I've been watching a lot of TV and I've been playing a lot of Sims, so... Yes, good. I mean, I think it's what what you end up doing this time, it's what you need. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. getting us through. Yeah, that's very true. I would love to hear what our uh, audience members are doing during this quarantine time. Mm-hmm. And if there's anything that you want us to talk about, we're obviously trying to continue bringing videos out into the world in any sort of weird way. Because, you know, booktubers, they're usually one booktuber. Mm-hmm. And they can record all they want. Yes. We are two. That is two. That's two. And so we're trying to make it work in any way that we can. Um, We know that this is weird to watch and weird to listen to, but we just want to say thank you for tuning in if you have gotten this far with us. Yeah. Thank you so much. And, you know, I hope we are a good model for you to stay home. And, you know, we just got to keep staying home to fight this fever. (laughs) You have to wash your hands <laughs> with Sponsored. Coke soaps. Yep. Sponsored. I am not saying that there is paid programming in here, okay? Cope soaps did not pay us. <laughs> Cope soaps is Brad's other business with Eddie. 
So I want y'all to remember to stay home. Yes. And also subscribe to us as well with the little red button down there and follow us on all of our social medias. We are on Twitter at Audio Shelf Me, Instagram at Audio Shelf Me, and Facebook at Audio Shelf. We are here for you in this time of need. So let us know what you need. Bye. Bye. <laughs>